Welcome folks to this new lecture in Electric Circuit Laboratory. In this lecture we are going to discuss lab number three and lab number three basically deals with the concept of equivalent resistance, voltage divider and current divider. So here is the lab objectives. The first thing is the student need to understand the concept of the equivalent resistance. What's the equivalent resistance is and how to obtain it. The second objective is how to measure the equivalent resistance using the DMM and using the test voltage test current method. Then the students need to basically uh, apply the concept of series equivalent resistance and then they need to apply the voltage divider technique. Then they need to basically deal with the concept of parallel equivalence resistance. And they need to learn how to apply the current divider technique. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the concept of equivalent resistance. So let's assume that you have a resistive network. This is a resistive network, basically a circuit that has a bunch of resistors connected together. And that's it. So it's a source free. There is no sources connected to the circuit. Only bunch of resistors connected together. We call it resistive network. This resistive network will have one equivalent resistance. We call it R equivalent. R equivalent. The basic idea of R equivalent is that if we come to the original circuit and we apply a voltage source V, voltage source across it, there will be a current drawn from it. Then this resistive network has one equivalent resistance such that if we apply the same voltage in this resistor we can have the same current through the resistor as the one that goes into the resistive network. Then this resistive network is the same as this R equivalent. That's the basic idea behind it. So the techniques for measuring R equivalent was the equivalent resistance of this uh, network. In the laboratory there is two techniques. The first one is what we call the test voltage, the test current method. So if we apply V test here and we measure I test or vice versa. So if we apply a voltage source across the network and measure its current or vice versa, I'm going to apply a current source and measure its voltage that will work also. What's important is you need to know what's the voltage and what's the current is because this voltage and this current are drawn by R equivalent over here, then we can say that R equivalent will be V test over I test. This voltage over this current is R equivalent because this R equivalent is this voltage over this current. So basically the first technique to find R equivalent is to apply a V test, major I test. We're going to say that R equivalent will be V test over I test. This is extremely important technique that students need to understand it and they're going to use it in this lab. This is one of the ways we going to find our equivalent is basically to apply V test and major I test. The second technique is basically using the ohm meter which is the DMM. I will connect the DMM across the resistive network but what the DMM does is the same thing. It's going to basically send a current and measure the voltage and it will basically say that the voltage relates to the measured voltage relates to the resistance itself. Right? So V over I is R equivalent. From practical purposes we say that use a DMM to measure the uh, resistance across the network. So those are the two techniques that we are going to use in the lab to measure R equivalent. Uh, which is basically very straightforward. Now this lab has three experiments. 
The first experiment is basically to validate the series equivalence resistance and the voltage divider. So let's assume that we have four resistors connected in series like that. And those uh, four resistors will have one equivalence resistance. So we have R1, R2, R3, R4 connected in series. We'll have one equivalence resistance, such as the voltage across the four resistors is the same in the network as an R equivalent. And the total current drawn by this voltage source, by this V, is the same as the current in the R equivalent, because this R equivalent replaces those four resistors. So we have four resistors are in series. Now the question is, how do you know if the four resistors are in series? We know that R1 and R2 are connected in series because at this node, only those two resistors are connected. Only those two resistors are connected at this node, then R1 and R2 are in series. So if you look at the current I, as the current I go through R1, it's the same current that will go through R2. So R1 and R2 have this node and no one else has it, so they are in series because the same current that flow from R1 will flow into R2. By the same token, R2 and R3 are connected at this node, only R2 and R3 are connected at this node. That means the current that goes through R2 is the same as the current that goes through R3. Those two resistors are connected in series. The same thing we have here, that R3 and R4, only those two resistors are connected at this node, and the same current that will go through R3 will flow through R4. Then R3 and R4 are connected in series. If they are connected in series, then we can say that by KCL uh, I, this current I by KCL, this current I is the same as the current going through the resistor I1, uh, is the same as the current going through the second resistor I2, is the same as the current going through the third resistor R3, which is the same as the current going through uh, the fourth resistor R4. It's basically the same current will flow through the circuit. Now, also we know by Ohm's law, if we apply Ohm's law, we know that V, the voltage V, which is the same as the voltage V here, will equal to I times R equivalent, because this voltage is the same as this voltage, and this current I is the same as this current I, then V will equal to I times R equivalent. This V will equal to I times R equivalent. And we also know that V1 will equal to I times R1. It's the same current going through, so I times R1 will be V1, and V2 will be I times R2. That's what we have here. And V3 will be I times R3. And finally, V4, which is here, will be I times R4. It's the same current going through the circuit, and then the voltage is going to be given by Ohm's law like that. Now we're going to apply KVL, summon the voltages. KVL means Kirchhoff voltage law. We're going to sum the voltages around this loop. So we're going to have V, this voltage V, will equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4, which what I have here. So V will equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. Now we're going to basically substitute for V and V1 and V2 and V3 and V4 over here. So we're going to have I times R equivalent will equal to I times R1 plus I times R2 plus I times R3 plus I times R4. And now we can cancel all the I's because they are the same I through both sides of the equation. And then we will have R equivalent will equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. So here, if we have resistors in series, we basically add them up. This is basically the equation for our equivalent. You add them up. So the voltage divider basically say that if we have resistors in series, if the resistors are connected in series, then the voltages are divided across them because this total voltage V is divided across V1, V2, V3, V4. V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 will equal V. So the total voltage V is divided across those resistors such that 
the voltage across any resistor let's say that Vx if we chose Vx any of those resistors is going to be I times Rx the voltage across the X resistor is going to be I times Rx where I is nothing but V over R equivalent so it's V over R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 times Rx so I will have Vx will equal to Rx over R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 times the total voltage that's the voltage divider concept but what's important is that the bigger resistor if Rx is big Vx gonna be big and if Rx is small Vx gonna be small so the voltages will be divided across those series resistors such as the bigger resistor has bigger voltage and the smaller the resistor the smaller the voltage across it can be so we call it the voltage divider concept for that reason so in the lab you're going to basically build the circuit and you're going to measure the current using the DMM and you're going to measure the voltages and then you're going to validate V over I will equal to R equivalent so you're going to validate the series resistors are added up and you're going to validate the voltage divider technique and then you're going to measure R equivalent using the DMM and you're going to see that they all match and this way you basically validate uh, the series equivalence resistance and the voltage divider the second experiment basically going to deal with the parallel equivalence resistance and the current divider technique so here we're going to have resistors that are connected in parallel we have four resistors connected in parallel we have a voltage V across them and we're going to have total current going through them and what we are interested in here is that we wanted to find the R equivalent one equivalent resistance to replace those four resistors in parallel such as the voltage across this R equivalent going to be the same and the current through this R equivalent going to be the same as the total current now clearly that by KVL the voltages across all those resistors going to be the same so if you apply KVL around this loop you're going to say minus V plus V1 equals 0 or V equals V1 if you come from here through the second resistor you say minus V plus V2 equals 0 or V equals V2 if you come here you say minus V1 plus V2 equals 0 or V1 equals V2 and so on so V will equal to V1 will equal to V2 will equal to V3 will equal to V4 this voltage that voltage and this voltage and this voltage and this voltage are equal by KVL now if we're gonna do Ohm's law I can say that I will equal to V over R equivalent so this current I will equal to V over R equivalent or this current I here will equal to this V over R equivalent also we can say that I1 will equal to V1 over R1 and I2 will equal to V over R2 and I3 will equal to V over uh, R3 and I4 will equal to V over R4 now remember that V1, V2, V3, V4 are the same as V by KVO so we're gonna sum the currents going into the node equal to the currents leaving the node this is by KCL so now by KCL we can say that the total current I will equal to the current leaving which is I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 which is what we have here the current coming in is I will equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 now we're gonna substitute for those values I1, I2, I3, I4 over here so we're gonna have V over R equivalent will equal to V over R1 that's for I1 V over R2 that's I2 V over R3 that's I3 and then V over R4 which is I4 now we can cancel all the V's basically divide by V both sides of the equation this basically will lead to 1 over R equivalent will equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 this is the equivalence resistance for four resistors in parallel and basically it is the sum of the reciprocal of the resistors now what's important is 
parallel resistors will have one equivalence resistance that is smaller than the smallest resistor and the current is going to be divided so the total current coming in will be divided among all those resistors so the current divider basically says that the current the total current is divided among parallel resistors and if you wanted to find the current through the x resistor what's the current through the x resistor is going to be v whatever the voltage is over that resistance so it's v over rx but v is nothing but r equivalent times i so then ix will equal to r equivalent over rx times i and the current is divided such as if rx is a small ix going to be bigger value if rx is big ix going to be smaller value so when the current is divided the smaller resistor will get more current we can state that more current will flow through the smallest resistor when the resistors are connected in parallel this is the current divider concept so in this lab and this experiment you're going to build the circuit and then you will be able to measure v and i and then from here you can find what's our equivalent is which should match the calculated values for our equivalent using this equation and then you're going to measure the currents through each resistor and validate the current divider concept. That's what you're going to do in the second experiment. The third experiment is very simple. Basically, you're going to have a network and you're going to measure the resistance, the equivalent resistance across this network using two techniques, the DMM technique and the V-test, I-test technique. So we're going to have a circuit like this. Uh, find an R equivalent of the circuit is not straightforward. You have to use delta Y conversion because this connection over here looks like a delta. So this is a delta or what we call the pi. So you need to convert the delta connection into a Y and then find R equivalent. But in this lab, basically you're going to build the circuit and to measure R equivalent, you basically going to use two techniques. The first technique is using the ohm meter, so I'm going to connect the DMM across the resistive network. And uh, the DMM will give you the R equivalent. And then you're going to apply V-test across the network, will equal to 10 volts. And you're going to measure the current I-test, how much current is drawn from the voltage source. And then you're going to say that R equivalent will equal to V-test over I-test. They should match. And then analytically, you can solve it by basically using the delta Y conversion. And then you're going to combine parallel and series resistors. And you will be able to find our equivalent. So in this lab, you validated the concept of uh, series equivalence resistance, voltage divider, the concept of parallel equivalence resistance, current divider, and how to measure an arbitrarily uh, resistive network using the DMM or the V-test, I-test method. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much.